What's up, everybody? We just had to go out and come back. Seems like every week, man, we try to go live, and the first one is just roaming and roaming and roaming. And then it comes back, and it allows us in. So I know last week everybody was on the other one and, and didn't come over here, so I don't know if that's going to happen again. I hope not. But, if you know, maybe we'll get this thing together. We'll see what's what's going on. Let me see if I can go over here in the studio and just take that whole thing off the chart so it's not even there. Let's see. Bear with me because I don't know why this is happening. Okay, we got 14 people in here. Let me see. 23. I think everybody's good then, right? Let me see if I can go back here and take this off so other people ain't trying to tap into a thing that's not even there. YouTube studio. Let's see. That's crazy, man, how they keep doing that to me every week. They don't like us for some reason. I don't know why. But let's see if we can fix it real quick so we can take that out. I'll be here. I'm here with you. Even if it don't look like it, I am. I'm here. Let me go take this off so people don't get stuck over there. All right, let's see. Live, I'm taking it down. But we're going to stay here, so we should be good, I think. I don't know which one to take off. Okay, this is uh, – we're going to delete that forever. Boom. I understand I'm deleting this. This is wild, man. Why are they doing that to us? But anyway, we're here. We're in the building. 62 people. What's up, everybody? Chad, what's up? Checking in from each side of Buffalo, New York. Salute. Appreciate you being here, man. With respect to everybody that's in here. Yo, my dude, I've been hooked your channel since I found it. I'm glad you enjoy it, man. You know, like I told people before, man, this ain't just, you know, like a prison content channel. It's more of a life experience channel. And we're going to talk about a little bit of that stuff tonight, man. Johnny Williams, what's up, man? Appreciate you coming in. I don't know if you guys seen that short that we put up, Leon Swam. What's up? That that little short took off took off today. So, so this morning, I'm gonna um, this morning I went by this place right where, actually, you know where my mother used to live over there. I don't live in that area anymore. I'm from there, but I definitely don't live over there anymore. But my sister still lives in the neighborhood. And last night, someone had hit me up and said, "Yo, man, you know." This kid, who I, I grew up with it, with his whole family, but I was close with his mother. Um, we were friends. She wrote me while I was in prison. We used to kick it for a little while. Not on no relationship stuff, just as friends. She was one of the chicks from the neighborhood that was just a friend to me and, and had always been a friend to me. And, you know, I had talked to her son since I had gotten out of prison. He had called me about his cousin, about a lawsuit from state prison. You know, we kicked it a little bit. And I knew this dude, man, when he was just a little dude, man. And someone hits me up last night and they're like, yo, man, they just shot Ray Ray. And I'm like, wow, for real? Where at? Right there by my sister's house. Four shots to the chest. They're like, yo, it ain't looking good, man. They're doing CPR around them. And my cousin was taking some of his family members to the hospital. They get to the hospital and, and you already know what, what, what happened, right? The kid passes away. So this morning when I wake up, man, it was, um, I was, you know, I had plans this morning to do some work. And uh, how do I donate? I want to buy someone a book. You could do it right on here. You you could do it. Amy, tell them how to do it. And we'll give away a book. We're going to do a couple things tonight, man. Someone might end up in some good, you know, we're going to do something good tonight. Let us get 100 likes, man. We got, well, let's get 89. We got 92 people in here. Let's get 100 likes, man. We get 100 likes, man. We might be able to give away a pair of these Nikes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Someone said we should. Uh-oh, you guys can see how many boxes of Nikes are. I better slide them things back. Slide them things in the back so you can't see them. But anyway, I had this thing heavy on my heart, man. 47 likes, man, 95 people. We're going to give away some Nikes. Hit that like button. We're going to go see who hit the like button, who didn't. If you hit the like button, you're going to be eligible to get a pair of Nikes tonight for your son or possibly for you. But anyway, so this morning, man, was heavy on my heart, man. I drove over to that neighborhood, right? And I, you know, I come down my sister's street and I turn the corner and the dude that you guys seen in the short video today, he's in this doorway and he's ah. He had a wig. When I first pulled up, he had a wig on, right? And and I'm I, I thought it was, I mean, I, I thought it was um, thought it was a was a female, but it wasn't. Wigs off. He's screaming in the doorway. I'm like, well, he's got the wig on first, right? Come back by, Jason Cameron. Okay, Jason Cameron. Big Kirk Van Orden with respect in that house. What's up, Kirk? So the dude's screaming. I circled back. His wig's off. Now he's standing up. And he's doing, you know, I'm like, damn, man, what's this dude? I'm like, what the? I'm just like, I don't know, man. I mean, I've seen some crazy shit in prison, but can you bench 300, bro? 
Mr. Thompson. I I can bench 315. I can hit that free 315 two or three times. And I can honestly go in there and hit that 225. We'll say anywhere between 15 to 20 times without even warming up. That's a promise. We got 77 likes. We need 100 likes, man. Let's get 100 likes. We're going to start giving away some stuff. We got a free book tonight. This brother donated $20, man. Jason Cameron, $20 for a book. We're going to give someone a book. We're not giving it away yet, but I'm going to tell you what we're going to end up doing. We're going to get there. Harvey, what's up, man? Appreciate you being here. Harvey talks prison. That's my dude. So anyway, I circle back, and that's when you see him over there. He's like, I'm like, damn, man. He's slamming his feet in the ground. And I'm like, wow, look at this dude, man. And then he, I, I think he's about to start twerking. I'm like, man, man boy, ain't trying to see that. Nope. But, you know, keep the camera on. You know, we did a little couple twitches here and there, and, you know, he was done. So I circled back around the block again to see, you know, what happened with the dude. The lady at the at the um, at the barbershop, she was scared to go in. She owns the barbershop, right? Love your show, Chad. You're the man spreading truth and hope and inspire me, bro. Hey, I appreciate that, man. You know, we try, man. We try to do what we can. You know what I mean? But anyway, definitely appreciate you. Tyler, what's up? Big Tyler in the house. Appreciate you being here, man. Okay, so anyway, I circled back. We got 85 likes, man. You know, we're going to give away some free stuff. We got to hit 100 tonight. Got to hit 100 likes, man. So if, you know, you want to maybe be eligible to get you a free pair of shoes tonight. Yep, we got a couple free pair here. Boom. Got a couple free ones. We've got a couple free ones. I ain't going to tell you the sizes yet. Hit that X. Hit that live chat. Let's go. Show that up. So the lady's scared to go into her own barbershop, right? Because dude's over there bugging out. And when I circle back this time, I see this dude, like, beating the dude up, right? Boom, boom, boom. Probably his, um, sad, I seen that email. And this is what the problem is on my email. I got too many emails, so they hit me up, and they're like, you got to buy storage, but we'll get to that in a minute because I got to buy some storage. I don't even know how to do all that stuff, but about to figure it out. 93 likes. We need seven more, man. So I circle back and this dude, like he's beating this dude up, man, knocks him out. Like the dude's knocked out in the middle of the road, man. But by then someone had called the police. The police are coming. The fire trucks are there, the ambulance and dudes laid out. And you know, sometimes. Oregon. Mary, we appreciate you, Mary. Appreciate you being here. So, dude, you know, dude's laid out in the road, and I'm driving home, right? And I'm and, and for real, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I play that song, right? It's so hard to say goodbye by boys to men. You guys remember that? I'll take you guys back to old school, man. Ozzy, what's up? Appreciate you tonight. I'll take you guys back old school the other day. I hit that funky Cole Medina. So, you know, if you guys are my age, man, that was Tone Loke, right? Brandon Douglas in the house. Um, so, you know, I played that song, but, and I want you to know why, because I, I had thought about his mom. I thought about Ray Ray's mom and I thought about the dude laying in the road. And when I drive through that old neighborhood, I don't know why I do it, man, but I drive through there a lot and it instantly makes me depressed. And I look at people and I'm like, wow, man, these people, man, it just seems like they're living just to die. We got 108 likes, man. We got 108 likes. Amy, I'm going to need you right now. Country, I need you. If you're in here certified, I need you if you're in here. I want people to tell me what size shoe does your son wear? What size shoe does your son wear tonight? We got to see it. All right. And Amy, I'm going to bring you back over here. We're going to give away a couple pairs of shoes tonight. We got a couple pair. We're going to send them out. Um, so driving through eight and a half, 11, six, eight, Amy Kruger, Amy Kruger, 10. And yo, this ain't set up. I'm going to keep it real with you, man. This is not set up. So, Amy, I got a size 10 over here. I got two size 10s. So, Amy, Amy's the first person to hit us with the 10, which I didn't expect. However he talks prison. Gregory Lyon, size 10. Gregory, I got two size 10s, man. One goes to you. One goes to Amy. You have to email me at freedomfighterspc at gmail.com. Nelson Luke said he's got a 12. Damn it, man. 12. Nelson Luke's got a 12. I didn't want to do this yet, man. But you know what? Because I seen that 12 on there. Nelson, I'm going to keep it real, bro. We got a pair of shoes for you. We got a size 12, bro. You got to email me. You got to email me. All right? 
Email me. Amy, put the email up. Them three people want shoes. Okay. Well, Amy's one of the people. Do you need them shoes, Amy? Um, and the other person with the size 10. So there goes three pairs of shoes. Gregory Lyons, you have to email me. I want your address and, and the correct name, and we're going to put them in the mail for you, man. Nelson Luke, same thing. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So we got a size 12 too, man. I don't know how many people are going to say, yo, size 12. But Nelson, we got a size 12 for you, man. As long as you're in the United States, we got a size 12. Because I can't send this stuff overseas, man. I'll send stuff to Canada. I've done a few things, man. And, you know, that's all part of, you know, the people that come in here and they bless us with donations, man. We got Ozzy hit us up. We got Mary hit us up. You know, we're able to do this stuff because people do look out, man. And I'm not asking you for donations. I'm just telling you, man, we give back to the people, man. Jason Cameron, $20. We appreciate everybody, man, that comes in here and they help out, man. That's what it's about. We're not done yet. We're going to give out some more stuff tonight. But anyway, man, like I was saying, when I drive through the hood and I look at these people and I say, damn, man, some of these people, a lot of these people are just living to die, right? And what do you mean when you say that, Chad? I have to sometimes reflect on myself and be like, wow, I was out here living to die, man. I was out here living to die when I was sitting in this house selling dope and, I, and there's a house. Well, it's not there anymore. It was there. And I drive by and now the house is gone. It was 445 Lyle Avenue. Right next door, we had the Jamaican restaurant. We were upstairs. We had, you know, you had to come down the stairs. We had a big truck tire in front of the stairs. That way, if the police hit the door with a battering ram, damn, your boy ain't got nothing to drink. And I'm thirsty as hell. <coughs> they hit the door with the battering ram. The door would come back. They end up hitting this house over there at 445 Lyle Avenue. The police did, right? And when they hit that house, man, they hit it with a tank. They hit the house with a tank. And they blew the door. You know how I just told you we had the tire in there in between the door and the steps. We had a hot pot upstairs. If the cops come, we'd you know, throw the dope. When I say dope, I mean crack. we throw that in a, in a hot pot with, with burning oil. <laughs> Timothy Burke. Birch, what's up, man? I appreciate you too, Tim. Always in here helping out, man. I know who you are, man. Let me see. Chad, I got a size 12. We're not there yet, bro, but we'll get there. Hold on. So... I know I was out there living to die, man. What do I mean, man? I meant just taking a chance with my life every day, right? I'm out here selling dope, sitting in these houses. People could rob me. You know, I could go to prison for 40 years. That's what I was doing, man. I was out there living to die. And, you know, there's people out here, man, and that dude, you know, people laugh. They can joke. They can play. But at the end of the day, I read some of the comments about the black dude, man, stomping his feet, right? And let's keep it real, man. That really is somebody's son. That is really someone who might have been down on their luck, right? They say to never forget where you came from, but honestly, it's not what it was. I'd like to forget where we came from. Kirk is from my neighborhood, man. Um, I know his parents very well. He was just a little fella when I went to prison. He was a dude that, you know, was supporting me, man. I'm getting out of prison. He ended up growing up. I seen him, not well, maybe a little while ago at the grocery store out here. He lives in my new neighborhood. Don't tell him where we live, bro. No, I'm just playing. Anyway. Um, but the neighborhood that we come from, man, it's just, it's just like, it's, it's a culture, right? But it's, my city is Rochester. Your city might be Buffalo. Your city might be Chicago. It might be someplace in Iowa, but there's so many people walking around, man, just living to die. And this, and this black dude that was stomping his feet, like I said, he was somebody's son. You know, he might've been down on his luck, got addicted to drugs. And now, you know, he's all the way at the bottom. And sometimes, a lot of times, a lot of times, man, you have to hit the bottom in order to climb up out of the hole, right? You ever think about that? Sometimes you got to crash, man, in order to climb back up. You know, and had I not went to prison, and my mother used to tell me this, I think I might have mentioned this before. Had I not went to prison, I probably would have died that summer. I probably would have got killed, man. Or honestly, in all honesty, man, I probably would have killed someone else or they would have killed me. Some of you may know one of my best friends, his name's Evan Carroll. He was murdered, man. He was murdered down at the lake. He was down there with his girl. And he died that summer, man. Well, not that summer, but two summers later, he died. That's the big tattoo on my side. You guys haven't seen that yet. But <clears throat> that's the life that we lived, right? So I'm playing that song, man. It's so hard to say goodbye. And that was because I thought about Ray Ray, man. 20, how old was Ray Ray? 27, 28? I think he was, you know, in the store. I heard, I heard different stories, man. But 
he gets shot four times in the chest and he's gone. He'd been shot before and he was laid up in the hospital. And I seen some of the pictures with his mama was there and his mom was looking over him at the hospital. He's got all the stuff on. And I look at his mother, right? I seen that picture this morning when I was over there. Cause I was just like, wow, man. I'm looking at some of the stories that people posted. His mama was there, man. But his mama was good. Now she's gone. His mother died in 2019. I believe she had a diabetic um, attack and, and she died. But she was a good person, man. And, you know, she didn't have to reach out to me when I was in prison. Like, hey, Chad, what's up? We went to elementary school together. We went to middle school together. She reached out. Like, hey, man, I really feel bad for you. I hope you're doing all right. And we had stayed in contact for a long time. Called her on the phone. She'd tell me about what's going on. I knew when her son was in prison. And I grew up with their whole family, man. And now it's like everyone, he just lost his best friend, which was his cousin, two months ago. He he gets out of prison. He wasn't out of prison, I don't know, what, two, three months? Maybe less. He's on a motorcycle. He hits, hits a wall, and he's dead. And he's posting like, damn, bro, how could you leave me like this, man? And you could tell he was hurt, man. He was posting things on Facebook. I had hit him up on the direct message like, like, hey, man, I don't know why USP Victorville's on lockdown right now, bro. I didn't know it was lockdown. I know Polak is. Um, so, you know, I, I was texting like, yo, bro, man, you got to be easy, man. You got to keep pushing. You know, try to give him some words of inspiration because I seen like he was kind of like on the on the verge of losing that. And I just felt bad for the kid. I try to catch some of the comments too, so I apologize. John, man, we appreciate you tonight. And four months to the day, May 3rd and September 3rd, they passed. Damn, man, four months to the day. Kirk, was that his mother's anniversary too yesterday when he when he got shot? I thought that was Dawn's anniversary. And I know he was going out, supposed to be meeting some, some of his people at the bar or whatever. And he he didn't make it, man. They're texting him back like, yo, what's up? They posted the pictures. The kid didn't make it, man. You know, he had been shot before. His mother was there to comfort him. And now, you know, some people want to look at it like, well, man, he's with his mama. You know, he's in heaven now. Or, But, man, it's sad when any young man loses his life, ain't it? I remember this kid when he was a little kid, just like I remember Kirk when Kirk, he was a little. Man, I remember Kirk when he was running around in diapers, man. And, you know, on some real dirt ball shit, I ain't going to lie. I had a drug house, five houses from where this little kid used to play outside. Ain't that sad? And when you're out there doing that shit, man, you never think about what you're doing and how it affects other people. You know, you don't have that opportunity until they bang your ass and you're in prison. And you start thinking like you start growing up, you start to mature, something clicks up here. And you're like, damn, man, I did some wild shit out there, man. I did some crazy shit. I used to, I remember people come in with their Christmas presents for their kids wrapped up. I'm like, wow, what the fuck? I don't know, man. So anyway, man, we're going to give away two books tonight. We got two donations. We'll give away two books. All right. So I had to laugh, looked at my oldest shoe, it said six, figured out it was size six in men's shoes. My 12-year-old is growing too fast. So let's go ahead and give away two books, man. First person that says, I need a book. You got to write, I need a book. Let's get it, fam. Jacob Trench, Jeremiah, Sewer Shark, book me. Okay. Sewer Shark, we're going to send you a book. We're going to send you a, an autographed copy of the book. Richie Rich, disappointed, Chad. That's, that's a good way of putting that. Country, your grandma must be one heck of a woman respecting her. Hey, I'm the I'm the hey, I'm the kid getting the shoes. Thank you so much, Chad. I'm forever grateful. That's what's up, Evo. Jacob Trench, I need a book. All right, there's two books. We're running out of books. All right. You know what, Relic? I said I was only give away two, but I wanted people to write, I need a book. So, Relic, we're gonna give you a book. And my Celtics blew it. I don't know if I should give him a book. He's a Celtics. Nah, it's all good, man. I'm I like the Celtics too. I need a book. So those are the people who are King, King Gorilla. I'm giving you a book too. There it is. We're all done with the books tonight. We was going to give away two, but now we're at five. I'm trying good to do good. If as long as you're in the United States, you get a book. Man, sending them overseas, <whistles> nothing but trouble. I'm trying to good. Most of my friends are all messed up, still pretty much work, play poker. Listen, you and Rogan and both of you guys help give me motivation. That's what's up, man. I'm glad that we can give you motivation. Swear to God, bro, people don't realize you could have a movie better than White Boy Rick. Well, that's the other thing, too, man. I, I you know, I, I, okay, so I talked to this dude, man, and, you know, he's, he's involved in some big things on TV, and we talked, and we went over some things. I had to make a list of some stuff for him this week, got that pretty much put together, and who knows, man, maybe it will be a movie. 
Maybe it'll be a TV show. Maybe it'll be a docu-series. I don't know. But we're, we're definitely in talks and making something happen. Chad, what's the email that I got to send the info to? I got to buy storage on this email, man, which I'm going to figure out in the morning because I'm, I'm going to Freedom Fighters PC at gmail.com. There it is. There it is. Look, man, baby girl, I appreciate you being in here. I see you got 179 with 145 likes. I think if we get 175 more likes, man, I think we might have one more pair of shoes hidden over here. Let's get 175 likes. we got 182 people in the house. Hit that like button. We get to 175. I'm going to give away a pair of these shoes. How's that sound? John O'Master, Netflix series, Chad Marks. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. My son's in Chicago on a baseball scholarship. No joke. I broke the cycle and made my son the top priority. That's what's up, man. Docu-series on point, but it has to be raw, not that Hollywood exaggerated shit. Nah, man. It's got to be real, man. And I think that, you know, the book is, man. I think the book, I think the book's a good book, man. Honestly, I'm not saying it just because it's my book. I just think the book's good. You got a size 15. <laughs> Matt Farino, we do not have a size 15. Buy space on the cloud. That's what I have to do. It keeps telling me that. I seen that this morning, man. And that's why I'm not getting my emails. So if you were sending emails to me and you're not hearing back from me, it's because I didn't have the storage. Giving shoes and books away, very generous, Chad. Brando, we do what we can. I need your help. What to do with that case? Any help is appreciated. So anyway, man, like I said, man, can you imagine what it was like for this kid? You know, and I tried to think about that as I'm listening to that song and I'm driving home, you know, because I live out in the suburbs now. And I'm like, I'm thinking about him, man, and I'm wondering, what was he thinking, man, when he was laying there? Was he still alive? Did he know, like, wow, this is it, man? Little Tim, I get banned or something? No. What do you want, little Tim? Email me. I got a free audio book for you if you don't have it already. You ain't banned. I mean, I think they shadow ban us a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I think we got good content, man. And I just don't see the channel like, you know, we're doing okay, but it'd be nice if that joker was blowing up and they were, like, pushing our stuff out. So let me just tell you, man, I did play the lottery, right? I played the lottery a couple times. This is a promise I'm going to make. If I ever hit the lotto, man, we're going to still do YouTube because, honestly, man, it's therapeutic for me, man. I enjoy doing this stuff. I really do. You know, when you guys hear them stories, some people, how's oh, that out of the book? The stories that you've been hearing lately, the last month, I write them stories, man. I sit in here and I put those together and I write them and then I narrate them and we put it together. So, it's not from the book, but there's stories that I write. Some of this, some stuff takes time. I also told you guys we were going to do this interrogation video. And that's why the real reason I didn't have a video the day I put an interrogation video together on this dude who killed his son in Oklahoma. And then someone else put it out, man, that morning. They also did the same one, right? And the person that did it, I learned from him. I like watched a couple of his things, seen how he did. And I said, I can do that. I can do that. We need 10 more likes, man, so I can get these shoes off my desk. Um, so anyway, that's why I didn't put the video out. I don't want to put the same stuff out that other people are putting out. Anybody know where we can get some raw, uncut, like interrogation videos that I could narrate and tell you guys what's going on? I know I Googled a few things, but I'm not too good. I see all these emails coming in. <coughs> My Celtics blew it. I got you. Gregory Lyons. I got you, homie. All the way in Portland, Oregon. We got you, man. I was thinking the same thing this morning. I heard he was talking to his family members when the shooter came up on him and nobody could help him in that moment. Was he on the phone or was he talk with someone in there in person? You know, I'm, I'm curious as to, okay, bro. How about a three X shirt? I got some three X shirts left. Shirts are running out, man. We're gonna have to do something different. Have you a Twitter account, Mr. Marks? I do have a Twitter account, sir. Let me see what it is. All this stuff, man, I should know all this stuff, but honestly, I'm always very busy, man. It's uh, at Chad Marks 19. I think that's it. That's my Twitter account. So I don't, man, I think Twitter sucks, to be honest with you. But anyway, Johnny Williams, I want a blood on the razor wire shirt, man. That might be next week, man. We're all, I need a hoodie if you still have any. I think I got one hoodie left, man, a 2X. This shit is therapy for me, too. Man, so, you know, I'm, I was wondering. Oh, there's 177. Okay. Again, man, what size shoes do you or your son wear? Let's go. You guys don't know what size I got left. 
It's a special size. Ain't no 15 or 13, though. So let's go, man. First person that hits the size that we got, Tony Ducks. Tony Ducks in the house with the 12 piece. He tried the 12 again, and that's what we got. Tony Ducks, email me. Send me your address. We're going to get them shoes out to you, big dog. All right? Now, if you send me an email and I don't respond to you tomorrow, it's because I didn't get it, but I'm going to put that storage thing on tonight or first thing in the morning. That means give it 24 hours and hit me up again and say, Chad, it's Tony Ducks or, you know, any of the winners, man. Amy's got all this stuff wrote down, I'm sure. Very rare for a father to kill a son that is beyond sad. We lost Marvin Gaye that way, but his dad had a tumor in the brain they think might have contributed. Very good possibility. I like Marvin Gaye, too. I will start hitting the old Marvin Gaye song up in this joint. Like, no, I better not, man. I better not. You know, that's something that, you know, a lot of people don't know, man. Some of my favorite music is that old Motown music, man. My mama used to play it when I was a kid, man. She'd be in there, you know, mopping, cleaning. And, and most of you guys know, right? That's real with the shoes. Respect you a lot, boss. Hey, man, it's all good, man. You know, honestly, someone gave me a deal on a bunch of shoes, man, and I bought them, bro. I, I bought them and said, man, I know there's kids out there that don't have no shoes. And I might, I think, I, did I talk about the shoe thing before? Where I read that book and the dude was um like, I think it was with the Crocs. Like if you buy one pair, he's going to donate a pair. And then I think someone else started doing it with socks. He was donating a pair of shoes to um Central America. So they all went missing on Lake Ontario. Huh? Not sure if you caught the last comment, Chad. I don't want to cut people's comments. Yeah, about his talking to his family. I caught it, bro. That shit's crazy, man. I feel bad that that kid died, man. I like that kid, man. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, man. He was, you know, Motown is modern Beethoven. <laughs> Chad, do a show on the Rochester Mafia family. There isn't much YouTube content on them. No, I could probably do something like that, man. You guys probably know who my wife's grandfather was, right? I mentioned that before, Joey to watch. He did time in the feds in Lexington. So. You can see the shoe when it gets to your house, man. You see the shoes when they get to your house, man. What matters is you're going to put on a pair of shoes, big dog, 187. Where do I email to get the hoodie, to get that hoodie? Freedomfighterspc at gmail.com. I don't know. Let me see. I don't know what size we got, man. I thought it was in here. Let me see. Let your boy see real quick. Let your boy see. Let's see what we got. And I know I got to go out there and hit that heavy bag on a live one time, right? Let me see. I'm going to tell you what size we got. I can't get his joint away, man. This brother wants to buy it if it fits him, right? Let me see. Let's see what size we got left. It's a small one, bro. It's an extra large. I don't know if that's going to fit you, big dog. I love me some Marvin Gaye. My brother could sing him and Tammy Terrell. I'm too. Should have got. Hey, you know what's crazy, man? I used to be in prison, man. And that was my thing. I didn't watch a lot of TV, right? But music was my thing. I had that MP3 player, man. I'd be doing legal work, listening to music, and uh, got my book hoodie next on my list. We're going to get some more hoodies. Chad posted our son a T-shirt for last Christmas. So grateful. That's what's up. I saw you hit the bag on the YouTube short. You're pretty fast. And, you know, some people talk shit. Charlie Parker, what's up, man? Appreciate you. He's always in here, and he's always looking out, so we definitely appreciate him. Some people were talking shit, but remember, that was when I had first got out of prison. I was home like three months, not working out, eating every day. It was just a little 30 second thing. People are like, oh, you got to move out. You got to block. You got to. So maybe we'll do one for a three. We'll do a three minute short. Uh, can I do three minute shorts? I'll do a whole round on that Joker, man. And we'll see. And I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you, man, I used to do that stuff, man. Ryan Jones, Nelson Luke, Ryan Jones, Jacob Trench. Okay, that's what's up. So I got all this stuff on my phone. So I'm thinking it'll probably be on my Witch Jigger over here. Whatever. Uh, the email. Get that dude back on that did the super burpees. Man, that kid's awesome, man. He's out there training. He's start, trying to start training people out there at the lake. And, you know, people talk a lot of shit about that little short that we put up, but that dude really has a job, man. Like, that dude goes to work and, you know, the tattoo on the face. You know, we talked about that, but we got to get a podcast together, bro. I think we're going to have one of them hopefully soon. Yeah, do it, bro. Love how you interact with the comments. Would love a book, but money is slim at the moment. How about I send you an audio book, Davey? How about this? Anybody that's listening tonight and you bought the audio book, I need some help. If you have an Android, what what app did you use to download the book? I know some people had trouble and they found an, they found an app and they were able to download it. 
people want the want the audio book, but they got an Android. They don't know what they got to download. Do you like to drink coffee? And how much do you like the street coffee compared to instant coffee? Okay, so check this out. I never drank coffee ever in my life, ever. I don't drink coffee, man. This fat of getting tattoos all over your face needs to go away. Yes, it, yes, I agree. Mine came straight through, Johnny Williams. Mike D, didn't see you, bro. Hope all's good with respect. Good looking, Chad. Thank you so much. That's what's up, bro. So anybody that's down, like I asked Danielle before, she told me, and I forgot what it is, but you have to download an app sometimes. And once you do, you're in good shape. Yeah, I don't drink coffee, man. You guys want to know something else? Fun fact, never smoked weed before ever in my life, man. Not my thing. I bought the paperback on Amazon. Okay, well, make sure you enjoy it. VLC is the app for Android. Okay, there we go. VLC is the app for Android. I should probably take a picture of that. And should we post it on like the community? Where the hell did it go? Uh-oh. VLC is the app for the Android. Relic, I can't look at it while I'm on here, but I, I got I got some of them on my phone, so we should be good. Coffee is one drug I haven't been held. <laughs> Nothing but love, my boy Richie Rich. Okay, if you're from Hawaii, we all smoke Poca Loco, Poca Lao. Holy shit. Amy Kruger, I took a pick. All good, Mike, bro. Hang in there. So, yeah, man, listen, man, definitely, man, we're going to try to build this thing up. Like I said, man, your boy played the lotto. Let me hit that lotto, man. We're going to look out for the people. But like I was saying, man, like when dude was laying on the ground, I wonder if he was still alive. I wonder if he looked up in the sky and was like, because I've seen people die, right? And they still got a little something in them. And sometimes like getting stabbed in the chest and then they die. But it, it took a little bit, a couple seconds, like 30 seconds, or maybe I thought it was 30 seconds. Uh, thanks for interacting with us. And I really appreciate your channel. I hope you power up on Lotto. Me too, man. We'll still do YouTube. I promise you that. And we're going to really look out for the people, man. My files on my Galaxy tablet, click and play. Okay. Damn, you never tried cannabis. No. I was always an athlete, man. I was always a fighter, man. Um, oh, I can hoop a little bit too, man. I'm fast with that ball too, I promise. And I got a little handle. You remember Jason Williams back in the day? Is there, is there a way to email someone in a USP or do you have to hand write a letter? You can email people in the USP as long as they put your email address on their CoreLinks account and they got to get approved. They send you a request. You say, yeah, I'm willing to talk to this cat and you're all good. Is Hazelden worse than Big Sandy? It depends on when you're there. When I was in Big Sandy, I think it was the worst prison in the country. 2008, 2009, I think it was the, the worst. Um, other places, it depends, man. I got an iPhone. What is this, iPhone 11 or 12 or something? I got whatever iPhone came out and, man, man, what year did I get out? 2020, 2021? So whatever one came out at that time, that's the one I got. I'm not afraid to die. It's just to run up to it. Whew. I, I don't want to die, man. I want to live, man. I got kids to take care of. I, I, I want to live with my kids, man. I want to take care of my boys, man. I love them with all my heart, man. I mean that. You know, I talked about this before where, and I, I like to mention it because it is important, man. It means something. In the beginning, I, I, I was just, I was scared at first, man. I was afraid. I never had to really be responsible for anyone. Now you're responsible, man. Now you got to make sure these little dudes eat. You got to make sure they got clothes. You got to make sure that you bathe them. But you know what, man? The best thing in the world, man, they always wake up, man, usually 5 in the morning, 5, 5.30, and I hear them. I go in there, and I say, I see you. And they're like right in their crib on their little arms. They're crawling now. Um, But, man, that's like, man, that's really what life is about, right? When you really think about it, that's what life's all about. And, Kirk, I don't know if you're still on here, but that's the other thing, man. Ray Ray's got kids, man. He's got kids, man. And these little kids are going to grow up without a dad, man. Ain't that sad? Hey, Chad, if you're, you were was a chief of police and end up at San Jorgen, how's life for that guy? <laughs> it depends, man. I mean, it depends. Some dudes make it in some places. A lot of times you don't even know. But the staff know, and sometimes they'll be like, hey, man, dude was a cop. I told you I was in Pola, uh, not in uh, – I was in Lexington – and the CO that was the CO in my unit came there. He he ended up catching a case for bringing in that, you know, bringing in that bag or that pack, whatever you want to call it. And um, I recognized that dude, man. And he's like, hey, man, don't tell no one. And then he went and told his, his bunkie and everybody knew and they stole his stuff. They put his stuff. They put, <laughs> man, this shit's crazy, man. 
They put his stuff on a dolly, right? They put his stuff on a dolly and rolled his uh rolled his locker away while he was asleep. He woke up in the morning, looked over. They said this thing called the bus stop. Anybody ever been to a prison where they got bus stops? He's sleeping in the in the bus stop. Did Chad say he hit the lotto? Dirty Mike, I did not hit the lotto, but I'm trying, my boy. I actually played that thing today. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, what was it? Dollar in a dream. If I hit it, boy, we're all the way in there. We'll still do YouTube and we're going to look out. We'll be giving away a whole lot more than sneakers. Um, damn, man, I lost my train of thought. I don't know why I do that, man. I lost my train of thought. Oh, so you wake up in the morning, you're in the bus stop, right? It's all these bunk beds, like the prisons you might see on like TV or in videos. And man, your locker's right there. And it's like, that's what you block off. That's your space. Like your locker's there. Your be- your locker's here. Your bed's here. There's another locker here, another bed there. <clears throat> and there's a locker on top of a locker sometimes. And they just put your locker on a dolly. And while you're asleep, they roll your shit away. And you wake up like, damn, you ain't got no blocker. And I wonder what, what it feels like to wake up and, and like your locker's gone. And they would take it downstairs to the second floor. They might have stole your locker on the third floor in a bus stop, take it down to the second floor in the alley, and they take it in the little room they got over there where they play cards. They take the fire extinguisher, they boom, they beat the lock off. I knew this other dude who had the big staples out of the soap boxes. He could pick your, your combination lock with that right there, that staple, that big ass staple. And they unload your shit, man. And you're walking around like Eddie Spaghetti beat me in the head whenever you're ready. Like, where is my stuff? Your stuff's gone, buddy. They're making a rice meal with your commissary. So, Cameron Conkright, we appreciate you, big dog. Thank you. Matt Friel says, money don't make you live your best life. You know, I agree with that. But on the flip side, money makes things easier, right? When you don't have to worry about paying your light bill or your water bill or, you know, you have to worry about if your son's got some school clothes. You don't have to worry about that stuff, man, when you got money. And it takes away the stress, man. It takes away the stress. And... You know, there was a woman that reached out. She watches the channel. And, you know, she had hit us up after we had gave them sneakers away. Her son had a small size, right? And we didn't have it. But something told me, hey, man, look out for these people, man. So that's what we did. I went to Foot Locker. I bought this kid a pair of uh, Nike Airs. And, you know, I should have ordered them online. But, again, your boy don't know a lot about the world, but he's learning. Um, it cost me, like, 50 bucks to send the shoes. I went to the U, the UPS store, which is, like, it's not the real UPS. It's like they're contractors for UPS. It cost me like $48 to send the shoes, you know? So I should have just ordered them like from East Bay or something. They still got East Bay. And um, and, and we also went, me and my wife went and bought them some outfits, man. And it made me feel good, man. You know, I always like kids. But since I had my kids, it makes me, you know, when I see people that are less fortunate, it does bother me, man. It does hurt my feelings. I'm like, man, I want to help these kids, man. Um, someone that's very close to me, she has a, um, she has a boyfriend. He's got like six kids, man. Kids, kids, you know, there's, they're struggling. Right. And one day I just bought them a sheet pizza and a bunch of wings. And the little girl was like, thank you. I didn't have pizza for one year. And when you hear that, man, you're like, damn, man. But they were so happy. Like it cost 70 or $80, man, to change them kids day that day for them to be happy, man. They're like, yo, we're happy. Don't that feel good when you make other people happy? Honestly, man. You know, I used to, man, I used to feel bad, man. People, the East Bay catalog was the shit back in the day. Yeah, they still got East Bay? Donnell Pitt. I wasn't able to do anything yet. I hear you, man. I'm going to try to help you, dude. I'm going to try to do what I can, man. You know, I I, I only got, you know, Donnell, I am going to try to do something, bro. I, the only thing I say is, man, I can only do what I can do. You know what I mean? I can only do what, what we got. So we try, man. We do try. We do try. And you've been a part of the channel a long time. Try to do what I can, bro. They still have East Bay just ordered slides. Okay. So anyway, man, if you have an opportunity to do something, right, for someone, man, some little kid in your neighborhood, his father's in prison, he needs a pair of shoes and you got it, man, get it. It's going to make you feel just as good as, you, as he's going to feel, right? You got to get them some socks, too. They got to come with socks. Can't have new shoes with socks, man, that are old. If you looked at my sock drawer, I probably got 100 pairs of socks. I always buy socks, man. Back in the day, I would buy socks, wear them, and throw them away. I like new socks. Something about new socks, man. Even in prison. People are like, damn, bro, you got that many socks? Crazy, right? So anyway, man, tonight, you know, at the end of the night, man, 
I want to talk a little bit more about the kid that got shot in the chest, man. Ray Ray, man, four times, three or four times in the chest. And you know what, man? They're 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 rushing him to the hospital. They're doing CPR. And in my mind, I'm thinking, damn, man, I really hope this kid makes it, man. He's been shot before. I really hope he makes it, man, for the sake of his family, for the sake of his kids. And I really like the kid, man. And it's just weird, man, to, to be like, man, I knew this kid when he was just a little kid, man. He was just a little fella, man. It's sad, man. He was just a little dude, man. And then to see him grow up and, you know, his mother had sent me pictures when she was on the visit with him in prison and state prison. And, and just to see the path that these kids went up, man. You know, the same path that I went up. It's like, wow, man. And then to see that that this kid, you know, he, he dies, man. Dies in the same neighborhood he's from. The neighborhood he was comfortable in. The neighborhood where he'd go into the corner store at any time of the day, any time of the night. And, and, and he dies, man, where he lived. And the crazy part is where we're from, man, when you go to prison, it's like we stick together, man. You go to state prison, you're from Rochester, man. It's like you're like your own gang, man. Everybody's together. And I can't understand how when we get to prison, man, we become a family, right? You get to prison, you become a family with these dudes, man. But yet here on the street, we're from the same city and we're running around killing each other. But when your ass gets to prison, man, you're going to be cool with all the Rochester dudes, man. Got nothing but love for the homies, man. But in the street, man, we ain't got no love for each other. That's a sad day, man. That's a sad day. And, you know, usually over here, man, people killing people, they usually get caught. Somebody knew or, you know, he was going to go out there and he told someone, yo, we're about to smoke this dude. I don't know, man. I heard there were some chicks in, that were there or whatever. Just, you know, someone knew, someone seen. Or you're so scared, you're a young man. I don't know how old you are. Maybe you're 18, maybe you're 17, maybe you're 16. You're nervous, man. You, you got to tell someone, man. You're, you're scared. Then someone tells someone and someone tells another and two people know and then four know and then eight know, then 16 know. Next thing you know, the homicide investigators are knocking on your door. They're looking for you. They're harassing your mama, harassing your, your pops, going to your sister's house, your baby mom's house. They're doing all that shit. Then they get you in the interrogation room. And that's when they trick your ass. Next thing you know, man, you're you're copping out. What are you going to cop out to? 18 to life, 15 to life, a flat 25. You're 20 years old. They give you 25 to life. You blow trial. At the age of 45, you get to see the parole board. They probably ain't letting you go. Not your first one. Maybe they will. Maybe not. The world's becoming more and more liberal. Maybe you'll make the first parole board 25 years. But, man, think about all them years you just lost. You lost all of your 20s. You lost all of your 30s. Half of your, your 40s. You're 45, man. You went to jail at 20. The best years of your life are forever gone. You can't never get them back. And that's one thing that I always regretted, man. I could never get that time back. And after I turned 40, right, I'll give you guys something personal before we get ready to go. I had told my mother this the other day. I was driving her home from my house. And I said, you know, I used to start, I, I started panicking when I was 40. Sometimes I'd be laying in my bed, right? And my heart would start beating real fast. And I'd be like, damn, man, sometimes I relive this shit, man. And I'd be like, damn, man, I'm too old, man. I'm never going to have kids. I start thinking, man, I'm going to get out when I'm 60 with good time. I think I will be 59. And I used to say, man, how am I going to take care of myself? My mom will be dead. I don't know if my sister will still be alive. I used to think crazy shit. Maybe I get a job at a law office being a paralegal. Maybe I get a hot dog cart and sell hot dogs when I'm 60. And then I used to think, damn, man, if I get out when I'm 60, will I even be able to interact with people? Any type of social interaction? It's all over with, man. It's all gone. You don't even know how to talk to folks no more. And that panic, man, when I used to think about that stuff, man, I used to have to try to chase prison out of my mind. And how did I do that? For many years, I played basketball every day, all day long. Play handball in the morning, basketball in the afternoon, basketball at night. So I'd be so exhausted, I'd go to sleep. And then I changed it to working out in the morning to doing legal work all during the day. Watch American Idol, watch a couple UFC fights when it was on Spike TV, and the day's over. I talked to my boy the other day, Brad. Brad had 20 years. He was my celly. He's like a brother to me. I still look out for him. I take care of him. And uh, I used to think, damn, 
when Brad, me and Brad are going to be sellies for the next 15 years. Right. And when I, when, when Brad gets out, I'll be short. I'll have seven years left. I ended up beating Brad out. Brad's still there. I got lucky, man. I got a blessing, man. I don't want people to be in that position, man, where you start to panic. You're laying in your bed and you're thinking, damn, man, I ain't got no life, man. You're laying in your bed like, wow, I'm going to get out when I'm 70. I'm going to get out when I'm 50. If I make the first pro board, I'll be 53. What am I going to do with my life? And, you know, whoever did what they did, man, to this kid, more than likely they're going to be in that position. They're going to be, they're, they're probably going to be arrested eventually, right? And I'm not, listen, man, it is what it is, man. The dude's probably going to get jammed up, whoever it is, right? I don't know who it is. Probably going to get jammed up and he's going to be sitting on his bunk, man, in reception like, dang. And then he's going to go through different stages. I'm going to beat this shit at trial. Yo, we're going to get some, everyone thinks they're going to find some evidence like you're on Matlock or some shit. Man, this ain't Matlock, homie. This is real life. St. Matlock. There isn't going to be some smoking gun that's going to get you out. Sometimes, like my boy E, I talked about, he had a good, the dude that killed him had a good lawyer. He went to trial, he got found not guilty. Doesn't happen often, man. You're going to be going through these stages like, yo, I'm about to beat these people. And then when they convict you, that's going to be the most loneliest day of your life. That was probably the most loneliest day of my life when the jury convicted me. Because I knew, I knew, I knew what the consequences were after that. I knew that, man, my mandatory minimum was 40 years, man. I knew when they came back, and I'll never forget it. It was like an older, older Irish lady. It was, you know, I can imitate voices sometimes really good. I just remember her voice. Count one. Guilty. Count two. Guilty. Count three. Guilty. When they got to count seven, I knew it was over with. Guilty. I knew I had them two 924 C's, man. Five and 25 on top of whatever I got for the drugs. I knew my mandatory minimum was 40 years. Went back to the jail that night, man. They wanted to lock me in. Like, yo, put them in a suicide watch and all that bullshit. That's the worst thing you could ever do is lock me in a cell tonight. Leave me alone. I was so sad, man. So depressed. That's just fucked up, man. You don't want to feel that, man. But even more so, you don't want your kids to feel that, right? You love your kids. How many dads are watching tonight, man? You love your kids? You don't ever want your son to be involved in that, right? And, you know, remember the other day I talked to that dude and, you know, it affected him, man. You could see that prison affected him. He was like, man, you got immune to this shit, man. I said, you got a son? You would never want your son to experience that, right? You don't ever want your son to get stabbed in the neck. You don't ever want your son to go to bed hungry. You don't ever want your son to call you and say, Dad, they stole my whole locker. Dad, I can't do it no more, man. Dad, I got jumped, man. They stabbed me. You don't ever want that, man. Ever. You don't ever want that in your life. Ever, ever, ever. So what is tonight, man? Tonight's Sunday night. I know football's starting soon. But let tonight be the night, man. You go tell your son that you love him. If you didn't do it last Sunday, you didn't do it the Sunday before, go tell him tonight. Say, son, I love you, man. Run your hands over his face. You know, I, my mom used to do this thing to me when I was little. I'd done it to my son. And I sent the video to my mom. And I told my son, I said, grandma used to do this to me when I was a little boy. Made my mother cry, man. Those are the things that matter, man. Being a father. Changing the course, man. Changing the course. You might not have a lot of money. You might not be able to do a whole lot. But every day you put them work boots on, you go to work, you come home, you show your son an example, man. You're able to pay your bills. you got a roof over your head. You're able to buy some food. You can just sit back on the couch and hug your son and watch a Buffalo Bills game because they are going to the Super Bowl, right? Or throw a football to him or be able to help him with his homework, man. That's the shit that matters, man. All the stuff that you've done in the past, all the stuff that you've done in the past don't mean shit, man. You're a new you, man. Today, you're a new you. Today, you're a new father, man. I mean that stuff when I say it. I want you to know that I mean it, man. So tonight, man, just tell your son that you love him. Tell your son that he means something to you, man. And your dad, I, I, you know, I seen this kid when my wife was pregnant. We were in, she was, you know, close to, well, maybe not close, but 
when I finally started to change my mindset, right? We were at this amusement park, water slides, and this little boy ran up to his dad. He said, Daddy, I love you. And I was like, damn, man. And I knew I was having two sons at the time. And I said, I hope that I can experience that. I want my kids to love me, man. I want my kids to run up and say, Dad, I love you. You know, I want everybody to be the father that you're supposed to be. Real men, real fathers, real leaders, man. I want your son to be proud of you. You don't want your son to come visit you on a jail visit because you chose the streets. And that's another thing, man. You see these dudes, man, running around, gang, gang, gang. Gang this, gang that. What the f See my boy Kyle the other day. This little kid on a bike. Little kid throws a sign up at him. Maybe 10 years old. And he responds, gang, gang, gang. I'm like, dude, what the f I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? It's a little kid. I don't know, man. Your kids got to be first, man. It comes before all that shit, man. All that street shit. Where do the streets get you, man? They get you prison or death, man. 99% of the time. Think about that tonight, man. I appreciate everybody being here. Everybody that, you know, that benefits tonight, that won. Yeah, before we, all right, I'm going to close in a minute. But Young Thrug is regretting that gang stuff. <laughs> you know, the gang will be there for him in prison, I suppose. His gang. But the one thing that his gang isn't going to do at night, they're not going to tuck him in and comfort him when he's having a bad night. And that's for everybody, man. Your gang ain't going to tuck you in when you're having a bad night. They're not going to tuck you in and say, it's okay. You can do this life sentence. The compassion, you know, sometimes you just need some compassion in prison. You need, you need someone to be like, hey, man, I care about you, bro. And you ain't going to really find it, man. You ain't. So anyway, man, tonight, man, go tell your mothers, mothers, fathers, man, go tell your son that you love him, man. Tell him that he means something to you. Give him a hug. Say, man, I love you, man. I love you, man. Take him out this week. Go do something with him. Real men, real fathers, real leaders, man. That's what it's about. It ain't about your past. We've all made mistakes, man. We've all fallen short of the glory. We've all tripped. We've all fallen. Or else we wouldn't be here, man. I can link you with Seth Ferrante if that's not who you've already talked to. No, I know Seth. I know Seth real well. We've we've spoke before, but no, I'm dealing with some other people. But yeah, I know Seth real well. We we've you know it's all good. I like Seth. Seth does good things. But thank you. I appreciate you. So anyway, man, we're gonna go ahead and close the show, man. And I said I was gonna leave a couple times, but man, mothers, fathers, man, tell your kids that you love them, man, and wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, and say, man, today's the day, man. Change your life, man. All these people are out on the street right now for. Ray Ray letting off balloons and riding four wheelers and partying and they're doing it the way that they think he wanted them to do it, man. But you don't want to be a balloon in the air and neither do I. Blood on the razor wire TV, man. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Got the Texas syndicate stuff coming up. Part one and part two tune in. I think you're going to learn a lot from this interview with respect, man, nothing but love for everybody until tomorrow. We're out.